Welcome back. It is the final series here on the mainstream. LGD versus Evil Geniuses. Another one of those series where we have two teams that are in the top four of their group who are looking to solidify their placement. Both Evil Geniuses. Evil Geniuses have been run around going tied with a lot of teams and then kind of duoing some of the lesser teams here. And uh, LGD have actually pulled some, some big wins and then also lost or maybe tied against some teams that you probably wouldn't have expected. So uh, maybe some inconsistent performances by LGD where I've heard a couple different players refer to Evil Geniuses. This maybe isn't their kind of group stage because they're definitely a, people keep referring to them. they're a best of three team for sure. Yeah. And that you could definitely see in the results of their ties. It's also very common, I think, for EG to end up being in the lower bracket at some point and then making their way through the lower bracket to like grand finals or, you know, third place, whichever. Mm -hmm. they, they have a, a tendency to do that. But this match, this is uh, this is group A, obviously. So you have like five teams within one game of each other right now. And I mean, among those teams, you have TNC, EG, IG Vitality, Empire and Secret. I mean, it's like they, they all have a very similar um, or sorry, not secret, but uh, the the other teams have a very similar point value. So you can very easily see EG dropping down, or you know if they take this 2-0, they could, like you said, solidify their position in the uh, in the top half of the group because mm -hmm. it is kind of getting to that crunch time. We have obviously last game of the day, and then tomorrow there's a, there's a, I believe three rounds of matches left, and then we're all done. Yeah. So very very important to to get a 2-0 in here if you can. Yeah, and LGD actually have a, a tough opponent after this. They have TNC, who are also in that top four position. So um, this is this is a series that really LGD could not afford to straight out lose. Right? They, I really feel like they need to pick up at least one game here to feel comfortable. Um, drafting style has been really interesting. LGD, I was looking through their drafts. They have only picked up one core in their first one, two in one single game, and that was Magnus. But they're actually going to go for the faceless void here because Evil Geniuses have actually been valuing that hero quite a bit. It actually feels like this is an, a more of an EG draft, this this Void Ancient Apparition combo that they're running. So I kind of want to build on what you're saying about the EG draft that LGD are currently picking is, when you pick the Void, I think it's just taking it away from Evil Geniuses because the hero is kind of coming back a little bit. Yep. And he's been showing a lot of strength throughout the TI7 group stages. It's a hero that we know Historically, Universe has played very well. You can put it mid. We've seen it in the past on the other streams, even just today. There have been a, a couple of mid voids. So yeah, the enemy team picks up like a mid puck, and you're like, all right, we could switch that void to a mid. No right. problem. Exactly. It's it's a lot of strength, and Evil Genius is going to go to something that we've seen before here during the group stages. The Naga Siren can always transition into the core. We've seen Zai play it mostly, I believe. And it's, it's just proven to be... A hero that still offers a ton of laning potential in the early game, very fast, 320 base movement speed. And Snare is a great tool along with Riptide, which not a lot of people think about, but it's a very cost-efficient nuke. It's kind of like an AoE void, but instead of slowing you, it reduces armor. Mm -hmm. And that uh, is all the more value. You've got an extra support, maybe a core that can jump onto the hero and help you out. One thing that I would kind of, de the, I think the biggest way to describe Evil Genius's drafting style for this group stage has been ambiguity. Yep. You know, they, they keep on picking up these these heroes that can run in multiple situations, right? I think they've run Earthshaker in all four of the potential positions he can uh, run into. They have been running this Naga Siren, which could potentially be a core uh, more likely support. Batrider can also be that support slash uh, offlane mix, just depending on the situation. Um, Void was another one that can run in different positions. It's like every single time you see an opener from Evil Geniuses, the first three pickups, I feel like there is at least two or three different laning phase scenarios that are going to be possible for EG. They're just going to lock it down as they see more of the enemy team's draft. I think it kind of lends itself to be worried about what your own strategy is. You know, don't worry like a ton about what the enemy team is doing, because if you trap yourself into this thinking of, okay, where's this hero going? Where's this hero going? And mm -hmm. sometimes you, you can't see the forest through the trees and you, you end up picking some draft that doesn't have enough synergy and you kind of fall flat. I think we've seen a, a handful of those types of games during the group stages so far. But I believe the last time that we saw the Bat Rider and the Naga together, it was a dual support. At least when you and I cast it. Yeah. It was uh, Crit, actually, on the bat. Mm -hmm. And then it was Zai on the Naga Siren in that game. So curious to see if that's the path they're going to take here. The the great thing about bat is no matter what you do with him, he's going to get farmed because he has Firefly. Like, yeah. that's that's probably the 
the biggest strength of the hero in general. So going into the second band phase, you see the Lycan taken out. EG, love that hero, obviously, played a ton. It's shown a lot, of, a lot of strength in the group stage, I would say. Pretty solid win rate. Disruptor is one where I don't, I, I know that Crit plays it, yeah. but it's not one that I feel is a go-to for him necessarily. But after picking up the, the Night Stalker, it does kind of make sense. Yeah, the, the Night Stalker, I feel like both Disruptor and especially that Lycan, uh, those are definitely focus bands for them to be able to third pick up this Night Stalker. They needed a strong four position. I feel like Night Stalker is one of the best heroes to run against the Batrider, uh, whether it's support or offlane, because you get such a gigantic vision advantage and inhibit the Batrider's vision. It makes it very hard for him to get a, a successful initiation. Um, and that'll also cause a little bit of problems for the Naga Siren as well, because I really like the Naga Siren pickup for EG here. It's a direct counter to the Faceless Void and the Chronosphere, you know, just throw down that Song of Siren. He's oftentimes going to be so far in the back lines, he won't be caught by that Chronosphere. So he just kind of nullifies uh, what a core is bringing to the team fight. I think that's that's always a great mindset to look at it and be like, if I can have a support that counters a core or anybody higher up in the net worth ladder, then that's a huge advantage for you. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's definitely one of those things where if you are playing a core void and you're in this game, you are almost forced to either know that the Naga is not there or just have to chrono the Naga. Yeah. And it's not a very good feeling. So going a little bit further into the draft, we see the Nature's Prophet picked up probably going to be played by Universe, although we have seen it in different capacities. I think it's it's great when you have a hero like this who can fully abuse one of those kind of weak-ish laning supports, his Ancient Apparition. He's not really known for his durability mm -hmm. in the early lane. So I think that EG are going for more of the lane dominant kind of pressure. All three of these heroes, you know, Naga's got great base armor. She has good harass. Batrider is pretty much the, the same in regards to being able to stay in his lane. Nature's Prophet falls under that category. There's just a lot of heroes that, even with a Night Stalker on your team, you're not really feeling like you can easily just win a lane. You yeah. know, because all these heroes are so good at just being alive and harassing and, and just being a nuisance. This is uh, one hell of a combination they got going on. Chronosphere with an Ancient Apparition Ice Blast is already a killer. But now in team fights, they can also have Pugna sitting in the back lines. He can throw down a blast, give him time to lay down his ward, and probably most importantly, go for that life leech. Yeah, I love, I love the Pugna Resurgence. The hero is so good at just ending the game. Yeah. There are not really a lot of heroes in Dota where you can be in a 20-minute match and say, eh, we can just go high ground, you know? Mm -hmm. Unless you're, like, 10 or 15k net worth ahead at that stage in the game, which is very uncommon. You have to, like, win all three lanes. It's just so annoying to play Batrider, uh, like, in a defensive capacity against Pugna when he's sieging against you. Because yeah. he lays down that ward, and then you're obviously going to pop Firefly before you go for the initiation, but then you get pinged by the ward. That delays your initiation, gives a heads up to the enemy that you're looking for. Visage, though, for evil geniuses, feeling that safe lane Visage, like we saw last time from EG? It's definitely possible. The hero is incredibly strong now with the, the change of the Gravekeeper's Cloak and allowing the birds to be just that much more tanky inside of the fights. I would even say in this game, it's, it's pretty hard for them to kill birds, right? Yeah, it like, is very hard. So how does the, the Ancient Apparition, for example, deal with a Visage Core if it ends up being like that very farm-centric, I have a really early Solar Crest and an Agonims, that hero is going to have a hard time just staying alive in general. And yeah. then you have Pugna, who, outside of the Crepify, he doesn't really have a self-save either. So I, I think of Visage as this hero, if you don't have an innate escape mechanism and you have low base armor, you're just not good against Visage. Yeah. Like, he's just going to kill you. I haven't seen the Ancient Apparition versus Visage yet. I wonder, because before the Ice Vortex change, this would just be obviously Ancient Apparition like oh, yeah, that's all true. the time. That's true. I wonder if the Ice Vortex will help him out a little bit uh, against that. You can just lay it down on top of him and then get a little bit of a boost of movement speed while slowing down the birds. We'll have to see. It could be he just still dies too quickly, right? With Solar yeah. Crest and uh, the birds focusing you down, it just takes like half a second to be able to bring the Ancient Apparition to near the kill zone. They're going to have the Templar Assassin be the last ban out here from LGD. I like that a lot, especially since they already have the Visage. Um, it would give them Roshan taking potential, and they have great Roshan inhibitors already with the Bat Rider and Naga Siren, so if they have the Roche taking hero of their own, um, that would add a lot for evil geniuses. And being able to kind of stymie the timing that LGD is looking for. I look at this lineup and I see very much like they're going to hit hard at 20 minutes and they're going to keep hitting you until like 35. And later on to the game, we're going to start having some more 
more issues with Furion really coming into his own. It's a major right clicker, and who knows what that mid laner is going to be. But I think LGD's timing is very solidly focused in the early to mid game. So I guess the the follow up to that would be, what is the hero that allows them to continue their push? Because it feels like if the game stretches out too much, that evil geniuses will just have the flat out lineup advantage because of how good their heroes are at splitting up the map, how little catch LGD have. I mean, sure, in the early game, Night Stalker's great, because you can walk in, you can void someone, you have, you know, your Ancient Apparition follow-up, or, or Pugna, or even a Chrono. But later on, it's pretty much just Chrono. And then you're looking at trying to stop a bat. You know, Naga Siren, we saw, even though it wasn't played in a core capacity, Zai still did a really good job at pushing out lanes all the time. And then you have Visage Birds pushing, and, and then, obviously, the, the Nature's Prophets. So the last pick here looks like it's going to be a Sumail Shaker, a Classic. LGD, they can do a couple things here. They still have, since they have the last pick, they, they had second pick, so they have the very last pick. They can change their lineup by a lot. They can run like Pugna mid, offlane faces void, and like a different carry, like a troll or something, if they want more late game. And they don't have to necessarily go all in on the pressure of winning that mid game and, and taking away objectives. They can still go for a faceless void safe lane or a Pugna safe lane. You can make a different mid. Any mage, last pick. That is definitely a hero that grants them the uh, the late game here, right? There's no way a Visage, Earthshake, or Core is going to be able to stop that one. That is a very, very good pick. I'm all, you know you you know me. I love Anti Mage. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm always a fan of a, a good old fashioned hit creeps game. You're but, a fan of farmers, man. Oh, I love them. I, I mean, I play safe lane. Can you blame me? Disgusting. You and I are like natural enemies, you know that? Like, I'm the off laner, you're the safe laner. I like to be very aggressive with my off lane. You like to hit creeps a lot with your safe lane. Listen, listen. They've nerfed safe lane so many times. They removed, like, they removed <laughs> yes, four man yes. shield from the side shop. You can't buy it. Slippers Give me those there sweet, anymore. sweet so safe laner tears. Mm, they do Dude, so good. Before they changed the shrines to be five minutes before you could use them, <laughs> that was. Point oh was the greatest patch ever. For oh, off laners. I actually just. I was so sad. All I hear all the time with the safe laners at 7.0. <laughs> this shit is killing me. Off lane is better than safe lane. Oh, it was a great patch. Great patch, Ice Frog. You, I loved it. You Thank don't understand you. our pain. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then after that, I lost like 500 MMR. <laughs> <laughs> the classic. Uh, all right. LGD versus the Evil Geniuses, our final series of the day here on this stream. We've got to Old Eleven already teeping out, getting a good aggressive ward for him. A Void versus a Visage. That doesn't sound like the most fun matchup in the world if he has a little bit of support, but I'm sure he's still going to be able to get a decent amount of farm. Uh, we'll see where Victoria kind of ends up. Maybe he's going to be playing the mid Pugna uh, up against some males, Earthshaker. I imagine that's going to be okay for the Earthshaker, right? Uh, yeah, being I a think melee so. against the range, I don't think that's too terrible. Poor man's shield is usually enough. You, you know, you have the bonus damage from enchant. You can use even aftershock to CS now because it does 75 damage at level one. Yeah. I think Sumail, he is notorious for like, it doesn't even matter what his matchup is. He usually just does well, unless the enemy team is, is focusing him with a lot of roaming. And this game, you're probably really only going to see Victoria moving around the map. He's, he's a kind of the only hero equipped to do that. Whereas the rest of LGD are looking at a very static laning phase, just sitting there trying to, to get what they can and hoping that Ame gets enough space to be able to really get that timing of the anti-mage before EG are able to pressure the map, get the Roshan, and, and take those towers down. LGD protect their bounty rune from the evil universe. He tries to snatch it away with the Treants, but is going to be pushed back uh, top lane, actually. Old Eleven was able to challenge Arteezy for that one, so they're able to get three of the bounty runes. Cha-ching! Looks like he wanted to try to go for the creep wave there, but realized that Crit's in the area. Not going to be able to stick around. Basis Void hates Batrider. I think most heroes hate Batrider. True, but Basis Void more than others, right? Because you time lock, but you don't get rid of the sticky, and you're just still going to be chased down. The support Batrider is really hard to play against this Void. I think any kind of incremental harassing damage is what the Void hates the most. Yeah. Anything that you can't just time walk off. Those, those 1v1 Ursa lanes kill me. Universe going to be gone on the bottom lane. They slow him down with a Void and get the extra damage from the Ancient Apparition. Failing to actually get that kill, they just turn around and throw the rest of the damage at Zai. Really good use of that first chilling touch. 
one thing you can't underestimate. Just that bonus damage coming in. Even at level 1, it's 50 extra damage a hit. Normally, Zai playing on the Naga Siren, you have the 6 armor, you're, you're super tanky because you start with a stout shield too. Yeah. Now they don't have a chilling touch. Uh, Evil Genius is just going to be able to come back and force. This is really reminiscent of that Planet Odd lineup that they ran in uh, in Dream League, where they put the Tidehunter support with Gush level 1 with a Furion. It's a, just a better version of that, basically, because you're running a, a tanky support that kind of sits on the front line that gives you minus armor possibilities for Ryu to really abuse the fact that you're running a, a ranged core offlaner with a lot of physical damage, as well as a summon that does a lot of physical damage as well. You're just a really abusing this minus armor uh, mechanic in lane. A lot of this pressure, too, is going to be forcing LGD supports to either sit here, or Ame, even with the poor man shield, is still going to experience a lot of trouble, just like CSing in the lane in general. The last time we saw this combination, I believe it was also in a 2v3. This time, Yao getting the net. Early in snare onto Yao, might just be able to get the first blood. They do manage to kill him first before Universe dies here. In fact, Universe is not even going to die. Victoria gives up on that chase as Zai is getting a lot of damage in on these heroes. Even throws an extra in snare onto Victoria just to get a couple extra right clicks. He's got a clarity, so may take a bit of a break from the laning phase. Meanwhile, ult 11. That's oh, nine no! stacks. That's nine stacks. Crit, is he really going to be able to dive into the tower to finish off ult 11 here? He's going to give up on it. Five seconds till the time walk is up. That looked a little risky. You don't normally see that many stacks. <laughs> no. Like, after two or three, you're thinking to yourself, okay, maybe I should just get out of here. Yeah. Well, that's excellent advice from uh, EG Samel. Destroy the barracks, then get back. Two and a half minutes in, Evil Geniuses have already crafted their game-winning plan. I mean, that's why they're such a good team. I Personally, I never thought to kill buildings, Cap. Yeah, I just, I kill neither. creeps. That's all I do. I kill heroes. Okay. I feel you, buddy. Buildings just don't enter into our minds. How's that top lane going for old 11? He said 4 and 2, so the offlane's definitely going a whole lot better for Evil Geniuses. Of course, they're running a duo uh, while LGD are trying to protect their animage with their defensive tri lane as best as possible. Samael's doing quite well in the mid lane, kind of evening up the CS against maybe Pugna. Pugna very slightly ahead of 22 and 6 compared to 18 and 2 on Samael. It's actually, I was looking at the CS just a minute earlier, and it's very favorable for Samael, but it looks like maybe he's beginning to pick things up a notch. It's pretty easy, I think, to stay relevant and farm on a Pugna because you have so much int just naturally that you can spam Nether Blast. The spell costs like no mana. Yeah. It's 105 for a, at level 2 for a nuke of 175. It's very, very high damage to mana ratio. It's easy to push out the wave. You know, you get level 6, you, you can just pretty much man fight anyone as long as you're not getting chain stunned because of how good life drain is. I wonder if they're going to do an early rotation. Uh, say, like, get they get level 6, if they're going to try and go for, like, a Furion TP on the mid. Just kind of block Pugna in, see if Samael can get in range of the Echo Slam or something like that. Yeah, if you can chain stun him, it's possible. Yeah. He's got the two points in Aftershock, so it's it's that really thin window where you can still kind of do it, but you have to be, like, immediately spamming all your spells. Yeah, I, I think, like, Pugna mids are one of the most rewarding heroes to gank in mid lane. Good game on to Universe here at the bottom lane. A very necessary pickup for LGD, especially Ame himself, as he's been feeling so much pressure uh, from this Fury on Naga Siren duo. Gets a little bit of gold back into his coffers because his CS isn't going so well in 17 and 4. I'll have a better recovery time. In the meantime, Zyman with the invis. He has the ensnare to help Samil get close enough. He actually went for the second level of Fisher rather than that value level of Enchant Totem level 2. Oh, Crit has a gigantic stack up here, the hard camp stack, but uh, Ola Love was actually able to chase him far enough away that he lost his sticky napalm stacks, and now he's got some a little bit extra help here. Victoria's coming in. It is nighttime as well. Crit's going to go for the stack one more time, and he, he moves downward. They are going to be able to get on top of him. Cold feet and the void. So he's down enough to be able to claim that kill. Great pickup. But back over to mid lane. Finally, Zai pops out with that ensnare. They're going to be able to close the distance with maybe. That level six just doesn't come fast enough. The life drain doesn't save his life. I think it will die to Samael. Overall, a worthwhile trade for EG. Yeah, Getting the right. mid player over losing just a, a support bat rider, not really a huge deal for them. My curiosity stems from who's killing that stack? Is that a Sumail stack? Because, I mean, the, the, I think that's a recovery crit stack. That could also, yeah, that could also be it. He's only got like one point in a Firefly. I guess eventually he'll take over the lane. Like, Maybe Arteezy decides to rotate with his birds, try to go for a kill. Like, taking out the Pugna is great. Yeah, I think going going bottom lane would also be really good just to pressure the uh, L LGD uh, Ame out of lane. Good uh, counter kill in mid lane. Then being able to pick up the kill on Samael with the rotation of Victoria and Yao. 
They just killed top. Trying to come bottom. Crit is going to try and clear through that stack right now. Old Eleven's going to come in, see if he can snipe some of it. Especially with Crit so low, he can actually just chase Crit away from the bottom of this CS. Goes for the time dilation. Crit slowed down. Firefly about to run out. Old Eleven does have the time walks. He wants oh, to join Crit God. on that corner. He's not going to be able to do so. But Zai ends up going down. Old Eleven time walks away from those creeps as Arteezy picks up his level 6. He's getting beaten to death, Cap, by the troll. It's not the aggroing. It's just beating <laughs> oh, him no! to death. Stop it. Stop it, troll. <laughs> Crit's at 150 okay, HP. All right. right. Finally, it stopped. And he's got Firefly up in five seconds, so he could be good. Uh, Zai ended up dying right next to his shrine on the bottom half of that one. They are going to go for some mail here. Big time nuke. The combination with the Echo oh. Slam turnaround. There goes Victoria. And now an ensnare onto Yao. Maybe is going to try and protect his support, but he takes so much damage with that minus armor. Universe is actually going to go for this route onto maybe instead of the life drain. The turn run. Oh, the new good thing Zai had that level of the illusions. He was able to get rid of that life drain and a big hit from Samael. It's going to finish things off with the double kill. But Victoria is going to come back for vengeance, actually. Maybe only level two, but the void, cold feet, he doesn't choose to chase. That echo did so much more damage than I thought. They're also going to lose Yao. Yao got caught by the familiars. They came in. That's the beauty of the Visage core. You can stay in lane and your familiars will go gank for you. I think that's what we call the suffering of an ancient apparition against the Visage. <laughs> it is. It is only just begun. All right, mid again. Here we go. Chasing him down. Life drain a little bit more. Victoria is going to have to run him down underneath the tower but he doesn't have the mana to do so. They also tried to go on the top lane. Old Eleven was uh, chased away, fortunately. Well-placed Time Walk was able to get him out of that nasty situation. TP in for the Furion. Ensnare is going to be able to catch him. Old Eleven is just going to get burst down underneath his Ensnare timing. Did not respect the Naga Siren well enough. Uh, he didn't have enough mana to Chrono, so he had to pop the stick. And in the time it took him to use that to try to get away, it was already too late, and he just ends up going down. They're so still that... chasing Smail. Jesus, all the way into the tower again. Victoria with the haste rune, all the way into the tier 2. But Smail's just so tanky. That... That's the big problem with Core Shaker, right? Gotta throw so many spells at that thing to take him down. Strength gain is insane. 3.2. Also gets a 10 strength talent at level 10. Yeah. Meanwhile, Evil Geniuses have this really cool combination where they familiars for damage, and then they've got uh, Treants as well as Naga Siren Illusions to be able to tank tower shots. They're going to be able to get another ensnare onto Old Eleven. He's going to be able to get the time walk away this time around. Really think he needs the rotation from his team, though. You don't want to lose tier two this early. I think it's quite difficult for LGD to straight up fight this though without Chrono and like a, an ancient apparition ice blast. I guess yeah. they are bringing maybe in. So if they have everyone and they can get like a, a good chrono into a blast or two and, and maybe a life drain, it is possible. But at the very least, they manage to scare EG off. I think it's very dangerous to let EG continually take towers like that when you're playing with an anti-mage on your team. Like yeah. Ame, he hasn't really been able to do much for obvious reasons, but you know he's recovering. He's back up to one of the highest CS in the game right now. And if he gets you know five, ten more minutes of farm we could start to see LGD's lineup kind of come to fruition. Here comes that Furion Visage push once again. This time at the bottom lane, while uh, Simail just covers ground all over the jungle. Maybe he's going to try and take that tier one mid tower, but Simail's pretty quick to rotate back to mid lane. He really doesn't want to trade one for one. He can't stop him though, really. Yeah. And Echo maybe. Yep, Goodson with the Echo does have the Enchant Totem to get the stun, but the Trap Fight goes off just in time. Unfortunately, oh, the there birds. is still the Chain Stun of the Birds. Artisi is moving these familiars around beautifully. Yeah, that was really nice movement. Having the Phase Boots there on Sumail secured that kill, like 100%. Yeah, Pugna is very fast, so if you don't kill him with like, in the stun duration, you're just not going to kill him at all. And the Phase Boots allowed him to close that gap after the Fissure was cast to ensure that he could uh, get the Aftershock damage and the, the stun from the Echo. There is just too much from EG for these pushes. They're like throwing too much in the front lines and LGD really don't have anything to be able to get there. Like what are they doing? Time lock chronosphere, but they don't even have the damage to follow that one up. Really, not yet anyway, with the ancient apparition still at level four, ten and a half minutes in. Look he at this army. That tone. It's just an army of creeps and like birds and trees and illusions and you can't even look at that if you're LGD. Like they're gonna go for a trade, they get the tier one. Samael is in position, though, with his Invis rune to be able to catch these heroes, especially with... Oh, baby, are you just going to get comboed? Oh, God! 
Chan Dotem has done so much damage now. They got the ensnare onto Old Eleven as well. With the familiars able to chase him down. Yeah, they're going to give up on it. Looks like EG just want to be able to take the mid tower. Nope, they're still kind of chasing. They get the familiar drop. No Fisher. Meanwhile, top lane, they do manage to kill crit. I mean, a, a kill's a kill for LGD at this point, yeah, which is sure. great, but... This they're... is very, very difficult to stop what EG are doing once they kind of get into position. Until the Ice Blast is online, like, Yao needs level 6 so badly. Because they're they're essentially playing a four protect five, but their heroes just don't have damage because they have an an, an anti mage and a, a void on the same team. Neither of these heroes contribute any damage whatsoever until they have items. So you're relying on your supports, and I guess your mid player in this case on maybe to be able to supplement that. They could lose almost every single one of their outer towers before they have battle fury and army. Like yeah, that's that. very scary. And this is what we were kind of talking about when we said uh, before that Evil Geniuses, like they're one of the few teams that's not actually playing greedier. In fact, they're playing a lot faster in this group stage than any iteration of Evil Geniuses I can think of. Okay, Sumail. Gonna be able to catch one here, almost holds up. Ami oh. gets the ball. Oh, he was halfway through that blink animation, but the nuke strikes him down. Before he can get away, Archie is on a dominated streak. Now they're going to be able to get even more as a crit. Managed to get the combo onto Old Eleven. Plus the birds dropping down the nuke. They just didn't have the damage this time around. But they can still kind of chase him with a sneaky napalm. He turns around, gets off a time dilation. But here comes Samael, and he's got the Echo Slam too. Fortunately, the silence goes down from Victoria. Really quick reaction for our Night Stalker. Does manage to save Old Eleven's life. I'm not sure if the Echo would have guaranteed that kill. Because he would have only realistically gotten one more spell off, right? Yeah. And then he would have gotten silenced, so... Probably okay that they didn't pop the Echo just to, to take down 11 right there. Still though, EG continually forcing these reactions. There is a Chrono and an Ice Blast now. The only other piece of the puzzle they need is to make sure that Maybe's in the area if they really want to contest this. It just doesn't seem possible to shoot to this low. <laughs> Familiars zoning these enemies back. And that, that's the problem, when you have a lineup like this, we identified pretty quickly, like, they just do not have the heroes to deal with familiars easily. These familiars can just be up in your face constantly and just drop before you can actually kill them. Now, the Visage pick is coming huge here so far for EG. I think in, in game two, you know, assuming that EG walk away from this with a win, that they're going to have to balance their lineup a little bit better because right now it's, it's kind of like this Pugna turned into some kind of last ditch anti-mage pick to try to even the game up and it really hasn't been working for them like picking void and anti-mage together means that the other three heroes in your team need to be able to create a tremendous amount of space or offer a ton of lane pressure and so far it doesn't really seem like lgd have really been able to accomplish either of those things yeah I think the, the uh, Faces Void Ancient Apparition opening also kind of signals that, right? Where if the laning phase goes bad, like, Void's not going to give you any damage in those first couple of rotations. And the Ancient Apparition will be far enough behind. He doesn't have Ice Blast. So it was definitely a, a weakness in their draft that they kind of exposed pretty early. It just kind of got uh, exacerbated by the fact that they went for this last pick AM, which both you and I liked. It looks to be a good AM game if he can actually get to that point. And they're struggling to actually get the farm for him. He's trying to take this tier one tower to get the Battle Fury, but the high ground push is already coming from Evil Geniuses. Look at Arteezy and these Treants and Familiars go. Already down to almost half HP on a tier three tower at 15 minutes. He's got the items to frontline as well. He's got the Hood of Defiance. He's got the Medallion, almost the full Solar Crest. Once he gets those, killing him is going to be just... I don't even know if they can. Okay, so this is the way the siege goes down from EG. They have Universe potentially and RTZ hitting a tower. And then the way that you want to engage is you want to chrono the frontline heroes. But you can't because there's a Naga Siren. Yep. So as soon as the song comes out, your form of initiation that is supposed to guarantee like this follow-up damage is just completely nullified because you won't be able to finish the tankiest hero on the team. Like four stacks of Gravekeeper's Cloak, a Hood and a Medallion, soon to be Solar Crest, there's just not enough damage. Yeah, if anything, that, that positioning is turned against you, right? You're gonna be a little bit forward, past the tower, trying to follow up on that Chronosphere. The song goes down, next thing you know, you're in a bad position in front of your tower, set up for a big Echo Slam or something from the Earthshaker. There's just so much counter initiation while Evil Geniuses Siege that LGD, I think, have to go for like the smoke wraparound if they have a hope and a prayer of being able to defend against these early sieges. 
catching the Naga, I think, would probably be the best. Because if you catch anyone else, no matter who it is, it, you just can't kill them. It's just, you, they don't have the burst damage, right? They can't kill that hero fast enough before the Song of Siren comes. Right, right. That's that's the biggest issue. I mean, obviously, if they can hold their high ground for an extended period of time, Ame now with the Battle Fury, there's a good chance that they can kind of, I guess, split push their way back into the game over time. But it's not necessarily just about the Battle Fury timing that matters in this case. It's also about how fast can he get his Manta. Because the Manta could be a stage in where he forces EG to use their abilities suboptimally. And that's really what you need to do to kind of throw a wrench into their plan. Another push comes forward from Evil Geniuses, Samael. He realizes a little bit far forward, so he starts backing away. Doesn't really get caught in the Chronosphere. And lets Arteezy do all the sieging. How are LG going to be able to do this? Especially since it's daytime. Because Victoria, well, I think one of the objectives of the Night Stalker in this matchup is to be able to get to that back line and silence the Naga Siren. Or, if you're going on the Naga Siren, silence the Earthshaker. But he just can't get over there. He pops the Darkness now, but the Tier 3 is already gone, and Evil Geniuses are just going to back up, play on this high ground, and maybe just full on back. But they could just go in again if they really wanted to. I really like the... I don't want to call it abuse, per se, but I like the way that Artiz is using his birds. So, obviously... You and I had a discussion about this on one of the other streams, but essentially the way the Gravekeeper's Cloak works for the birds is that it counts as if you have the same amount of stacks as the hero, which means that they're taking 80% less damage from all sources all the time. So when they're like blasting the birds and right-clicking them, they're just not taking any damage because Arteezy's not getting hit. No one's breaking through the Gravekeeper's Cloak because it takes a minimum of 50 damage to go through one charge. And the tower doesn't even hit him that hard. <laughs> so it's like... How do you break through the defense of this hero? There's a lot of time that LGD need to buy, like creep cutting or getting across the map and split pushing to keep EG out of your base is really the only play that LGD have right now. It almost feels like LG it's going to be one of those games where losing Raxes is just more time for you. You know, it really is. It, it's just going to be like, like we know they're going to take that lane of Rax, which is normally an idea that you never want to enter into for your strategy. But this one, it feels like we're they're going to take it. We're just about how much can we slow them down before they take that and go for the next one? They're currently trying to take Roshan right now. First one of the game. That'll be real easy. Yeah, especially with the solar crest and all the damage. This is probably just the high ground push as soon as this ends, or as soon as this dies, because the, the tier 3 bottom is exposed or dead, Sales I guess. Sales coming in hot and fast with a the smoke. They're going to be able to jump on to old 11. They'll get the chain done. Will he have to use Echo Slam? Yeah, he'll blow it just to make sure. Good that just job. guarantees... Yeah, get out of there, Yao. Ooh. That just guarantees that they can't fight. Yeah, like a, Without Chrono, there's no chance. Kill Looks a like hero, tank Roshan, evil geniuses. They're just very quickly checking all the boxes in the to-do list. The crazy thing about this game is Ame is still sitting atop the net worth, despite everything that's happening so far. Yeah. If EG, for whatever reason, blunder their push, there is an opportunity for LGD to, to come back into the game, for sure. The question is, how... Like, with the, the way their pushes go, might have to hold that thought. Wow, they're really committing for this one, even though they don't have Echo Slam. Good silence. And Crit doesn't have Lasso. Good silence out. No, and the Cold Feet Plus maybe almost finished him off, and they do manage to get the last little bit of procs for Staff Forward. Maybe trying to get away to Crepify for the extra damage, but it doesn't actually kill that uh, Samael Earthshaker, and the Ice Blast doesn't land, which might have just been able to finish him off, but uh, no such luck. LGD. Trade maybe he's Pugna for the Bat Rider. And considering like the, the net worth lead by AM, there's not even that big of an overall net worth disparity. So that trade wasn't actually like, you know, when you're really far behind, you can actually kind of trade a two position for a three position, be okay with it. Yeah, just because the net worth discrepancy makes up for it. Yeah. This time it's it's not really the case. It's more about EG's lineup just is so difficult for LGD to handle with the tools that they currently have. Yeah. What they're lacking is items. That's what they need more than anything else because they do not have damage, whereas EG have the capability oh, no. of Oh, no, Orchid already. Hold 11. Chant Totem, and the Orchid will pop him. This is... Well, I guess he has buyback. There is a Chrono available. I was going to say, that could just potentially be Rax since they have the Aegis anyway, and they can just casually walk down uh, that bottom lane and just hit the tower, but you never know. 
<laughs> Alright. The old offensive GG from Evil Geniuses. Quick little mistake from EG as I'm sure they're spamming their chat wheel all the time. Right back. Well, let's see. Can EG deal some damage here? Oh, I guess the Void spent his money. Crit's gonna start moving forward with the Firefly while they're hitting on this melee racks. Um, he's just gonna keep on pushing. He'll TP in if they get a really sick Chronosphere or something, but that seems unlikely at this point. All these heroes in the back. Crit actually gets the initiation on Old 11. They give him the Decrepo. I have a little bit of heal, but the magic damage is enough to be able to finish him off, and that just kills the whole entire team fight. There's no way LGD can defend this lane of Rax, so they give up on the idea. The rest of them go back to Shrine, except for the Night Stalker, who's gonna be caught by the Yule Scepter. Hit by some mail. That'll be two down. And a quick rotation by EG, and it's mid lane push now. I'm not entirely sure if Ame even TPing home at this point matters that much. No. Like, look at this just army. Back line, Samil jumps again, catches maybe an instant buyback there. But they're not going to be able to take advantage of the very aggressive stance from EG. They're just surrounding this tower. There's nothing LGD can do about it. Void's back up now. If he can get the jump in, Kronos here managed to catch two there, especially with Arteezy here way on the front lines, but there goes that song of the Siren, does manage to clip maybe at the edge of it too to stop that life drain. And now they're gonna get on top of Baby as he's really far forward. Samael goes for it, actually backs himself away with BKB. Animates, they're gonna be able to take down Samael. He goes for the next one, looks for Zai, he's to crap a fight up. Old Eleven's in some serious trouble though, he timed on forward and instantly is jumped on by Arteezy and the birds. Now with the drops onto Ami, they bring him lower and lower, he's gonna have to fling himself backwards, but Victoria can keep on moving oh. forward with the Ice Blast landing on multiple heroes. Maybe they can actually take down Arteezy as well. Maybe another nuke with the Ice Blast. They finally take him down. That Aegis is gone, and so are the familiars. As the Grave Keeper's cloak ends, Arteezy's gonna come back up, but he doesn't have that cloak, or not a whole lot of charges on it. But fortunately, the sticky napalm makes it hard for Ame to chase. That's all they're gonna be able to get off of that is three heroes from EG. That was huge for LGD to get that kind of defense in that situation. The, the thing that really made the fight was Ame recognizing the fact that this was an all-in moment. A Manta style may not be enough to keep you alive during that one fight, so what does he do? He buys BKB. 10 second magic immunity, goes in, gets the free auto attacks, and basically anyone he wants, we're gonna get a chance to see it again. At this point in time, there was no uh, AA blast to be able to, to be thrown out. We saw Zai with the counter initiation and the song. And you kind of think at this point, okay, well, EG can probably just run, but they don't. And now they're gonna be going for more kills here on the side of EG as they manage to secure the kill on maybe no buyback for a full minute. This is a and bit of a bummer. They catch old 11 as well. Some mail in range for the old scepter. Uh, Victoria's got to stop this enchant totem, but he's not going to be there in time. There's even Crave with the lasso, so that is another death. No matter how many times you time walk, my friend, there will always be another EG member in place. Ame not going to be hit by that Fisher. He's really hoping to be able to pick up his Manta before this next push, but it doesn't look like it. Yeah, EG are relentless here. Another lane of racks is space for Ame to get his next set of items. Uh, it's so painful that they ended up losing the Void. He would have had Chrono for this. Yeah. Chrono just came off cooldown about a second ago. The BKB was up as well for Ame. There was potential for them to defend, but they just... They went out of base and weren't expecting EG to be over the across the map that fast. End up losing two integral heroes for the, the base defense. And now there's a gigantic push coming in at top lane too. Yeah, that's four range creeps. That is pretty spooky. I don't know if EG want to try to force it too much. Yeah. It's the... Wait for... Well, Roshan's still a ways away. Yeah, I was just going to say that, but it's it's two minutes until we know when it's going to spawn. Yeah. Not just two minutes until it's going to be up, so... It does buy time for the Anti-Mage to finish up the Manta style. That means he won't have buyback, but at this point, you kind of... Like, you kind of need to not have buyback anyway. If you don't have every item in your inventory as the Anti-Mage right now to defend, then your buyback is meaningless because your team is most likely going to be dead. He's about to hit level 20. You get the 15% evasion, right? Yeah, I think so in this game. Yeah, for sure. A lot of the time you want stats, but against like the right-click damage, and because of the fact that he has such an early BKB, I feel like the evasion is just more useful. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's still that big enchant totem hit from Samael, but at least it'll help him mitigate a lot of damage from Arteezy and his birds. Yeah, the, the unfortunate part is the true strike. Uh, even if he has like Butterfly or whatever, that Earthshaker can still just punch him in the face with a totem. It's a lot of damage. 
They've got more Solar Crests. Zion's got to pick one up, too. I like this move from Ame, scouting things out. Yeah. Needs to be careful not to get spotted by the bird. Still 10 seconds on the uh, TP. I like this because if he found the, the right hero with this Manta, he could actually get a, a quick pick, and yep. that would really help open up the map for them. But he's not finding it. He's going to have to give up. Scouting those heroes, I wonder if LGD are ever going to venture on the offensive. Maybe like a four-man smoke behind the AM or something like that. I think it's it's probably better to make EG use all of their stuff outside of this. Oh, there goes the lasso. Pull back, but Samael's giving up on that real quickly. The darkness. Samael is scared of the dark. Runs away from the night, man. Night Were they night. just trying to force BKB, I guess? Uh, I guess so, maybe. I don't know. It, it didn't even look that... Well, the thing is, they had no vision, right? Like, EG had no vision of that, so when they go in and they don't see anyone else on the map, yeah. they're just thinking, okay, well, maybe there are people behind him. Best case scenario, we force a BKB charge. Because it, it still is a pretty big deal. Having a nine-second BKB for the, the base defense is going to be nice. I suppose, at this point, it's already been enough time to where EG can justify waiting for Roshan to spawn again, and then just taking it, because, honestly, if LGD can test that, it, it's, it's a very difficult fight. That's probably one of the worst places on the map for their lineup against the Naga, because it's so hard to catch that hero, and or even throw a Chrono and have it be useful. Because Zai can literally stand like on his shrine and still be able to walk into the pit and, and use Song effectively. I like the Aghanim's choice next for Ame. You've got a, a lot of very dangerous single target abilities. So you've got the Ensnare from uh, Naga Sirens. Net. You've got the uh, Bat Rider Lasso. Uh, you've even got uh, Grave Chill. That'd be pretty helpful. Yeah, I like Block the, the Grave Chill and give it to yourself. Normally, I'm I'm a big fan of things like Lincoln's over Aghanims, but in this game, because he's under so much pressure, and they don't know how much time they have to be able to realistically farm a, a, another item, Aghanims for the the time frame that he has is probably the best choice. Yeah. Wait, if you bounce back the lasso, you can still right click on him. Uh, I think it disables auto attack on Bat, but I don't actually know the interaction. Yeah. That... <laughs> you don't Imagine think about you, it, right? You block the lasso, and, and, and obviously he turns around and actually lassoes the Bat, and then you're like, well, but I can't like... I would imagine it He works. just right-clicked an illusion, kind of revealed himself with the four-man smoke. They just kind of have to hurry because they don't want to be losing too many of these Raxes. They're going to jump in now. They actually go straight for Samael. He goes ahead, Yule Scepter's himself up. Ami's still going to go for the surround here. They have the vision. It's a little bit late, but they are going to be able to catch Samael in the trees. But in the meantime, the rest of the fight rages on. Old Eleven is unable to get off his Chronosphere. So now Ami is in a bit of trouble. He's going to be controlled up heavily by the birds. Victoria and maybe are still sitting on the side as the uh, helpers to the standing mages. He starts backing himself away. Victoria is going to have to be the one that goes down to help the AM escape. And now, does that have PKB? Only has Manta coming up in five seconds time. What that buyback looks like to be enough to scare Evil Genius away, unless they can maybe kill maybe here. But his prep spike does stop a lot of the damage coming his way. The universe is still gonna go for the right click and he actually gets it with a shadow blade. But now Ami comes forward with the Manta, does not have the ultimate, and they do have the Song of Siren, so they get the extra kill. They can even uh no, they're not gonna set up for the kill on Night Stalker. That'd be risky as hell, so they all TP away. A free pick on maybe's Pugna, and they'll back up. That was an amazing fight for LGD. Like, sure, they lose some heroes, but they didn't even chrono. Like, they go in from the side, they catch Sumail right away, they took down Universe. At that point in the fight, you're already feeling like that's a victory, more or less. You know, you take away a lot of the trees. You're, you're just trying to really buy this extra time so that, you know, after the Aghanims, you know, you get the Abyssal Blade on the Anti-Mage, maybe you eventually make your way to a Butterfly. Slowly but surely, even though EG has, like, this 10k net worth lead, if you keep taking successful fights and, and delaying and delaying, there, there is still a small chance for LGD to make their way back. Who is this born again Draskal that I'm talking to? You looked at it as they they were able to survive without the face of War. Oh no, they're gonna be able to kill Universe here, so one for one trade of Oh no! Samael, what happened? He messed up the blink. Wasn't able to get off the Echo Slam, and now, well, Victoria is still definitely dead, but Mamie's going to be able to get a lot of damage on his side. They're trying to finish him up so they don't have to worry about that Song of Siren. Not that he had it anyway. Ami's going to be able to take him out. Yao is going to be chased down by Familiars. Run, Yao, you run! Run away from the birds! Ame, he turns and fights. He pops his BKB. He actually still had that one. He could go for Samael. He's out of mana, so his damage is not doing nearly enough, and the physical damage for the birds is too much. Oh. Ami tries to get away, but it's no! He couldn't blink out. The Familiars catch him first. The attacks are too fast. He does have a buyback. And there is Roshan up, so I'm not sure if Evil Geniuses are going to force that out of him. 
But a big win there from EG. Yeah, they're going to throw the scouting ulti into the pit. EG will probably just walk straight in there after the, the shrine usage here. That was... It was so unfortunate because the Void just keeps dying before he's able to ult. Like, Eleven has not really been able to use his Chronosphere in the last few big engagements. At that time, it ended up hurting them a lot. Yeah. Imagine if they had the Chrono, they, they probably would have been able to finish at least two or three heroes off just because of how farmed the Anti-Mage is comparative to everyone else in the game. What do you think about this Helmet Dominator choice by him? Because that, that, would, that would pretty much be a Blink Dagger, and that would help him get off Chronosphere in these nasty situations. I feel like he may regret that choice a little bit, but I, I don't know. It, it feels like one of those games where, okay, I blink Chrono, but there's an Aga Siren on the other team. So maybe yeah. his justification for not buying it straight away is, this is something that allows me to farm. I can be out on the map a little bit longer. You know, I'm, I'm getting some, some kind of guaranteed value, whereas the blink doesn't necessarily guarantee that you're going to win the fight. I think at this point, though, after having seen the way that everything has gone, that blink may have been uh, may have been the better option, but I still think that their lineup is at a huge disadvantage just given what EG have been able to do in the, the early mid game. <laughs> I mean, he's given up on that Aghanim Scepter. He saw the amount of damage he took from Solar Crest plus Aghanim's birds from the Visage, and he said, no, no, no. I got to get myself some armor. He's going to go for the Assault Curass next instead. He did go for the plus 10 all stats. Okay. I mean, if you're going to buy the, the plate mill, then it makes sense to go stats because yeah. it's a better uh, effective HP boost. Yeah. And, and you still want to be able to deal enough damage to get kills. And he probably just doesn't feel good enough about the evasion against that enchant totem. Yeah. I mean, I... And, and I suppose there's uh, going to be Bloodthorn coming out from Nature's Province. That, that guy is doing a tremendous amount of work. Like, given the, the game that he's had, he's pretty much the one keeping LGD in the game. At this point. Here comes the Familiars. Forced to pop darkness. You see old 11 on hard left hand side here looking for a free opening into a chronosphere. Been the problem though, evil geniuses, the way they set up, they're really forcing LGD to come to them, and it's very hard with just that time watch, just 675 range to be able to get in position and get off the chronosphere, especially if you've got quick fingers. Like, you know, they've got a lot of instant stuns, and you also have that orchid for the silence as well. Oh, the birds are going to find Eleven here. Oh, no, Eleven. They're going to go for the rain tracks instead. Get some permanent damage, and it might just actually get the full rain tracks. Familiar start running out of damage, so he's going to have to drop them down. But our team himself is going to be gone on the image. Get the Echo Slam, and there goes the Chronos here. So the Song of Siren is going to be forced out here, but a really long range maybe pull is going to be able to take away that Aegis from Samael's Earthshaker. He's in an awkward position. Triple drop from the Aegis Familiar is going to be able to catch Old Eleven, and they'll take him down. Nami pops his BKB, but is unable to get any real good damage. In fact, the Familiars are doing too much to him. He has to go back to the fountain, and that leaves Evil Geniuses the opening to move forward onto these barracks. Maybe. Somehow has to defend this one melee Rax against these Treants and against these Familiars. Artisan starts coming forward, roots up Victoria, and with all that damage, fortunately to Crevelite, well, it doesn't actually save him because that just increases the damage from Artisan's Soul Assumption nuke to finish him off. Illusions, Familiars, Ame has to find an opening, and he does get Universe, a big blast with the Ice Blast coming in, as long as it hit these heroes, oh my god, he actually popped the cheese just before the Ice Blast clipped him, so Samael goes up to full HP, Ame at half, not feeling comfortable, moving forward, has to go back to the Fountain once again, but it does look like LGD have held once again, it cost them a tier 3, it cost them a range racks. They're sitting on one last building against Megas, but LGD are grinding out survival. I, I just, I gotta commend the way the Ame is playing the game. Like he, every single thing that he's done so far in terms of itemization has, has made him able to fight this ridiculous onslaught of EG's net worth advantage, 16,000 in, in a 35 minute game. That is enormous. So instead of, you know, going back and, and finishing the full AC, he recognizes, hey, I might not have the time. I'm just going to buy the item that gives me the most bang for my buck right now. And that's the Vlad's. You know, it helps against all the damage that the trees do, the illusions, you know, the visage birds and, and all this stuff. And looking forward potentially into the next game as well. I think that these types of strategies, if they had one less, like, really good pushing hero, say they, they ban Profit or they ban Visage, I think that this type of strategy might not be quite as effective as it has been yeah. against what LGD wanted to do. Maybe or excuse me, Atme has been sort of the rock for LGD, and his item progression was pretty much 
80% of what LGD was. But we do have Navy side in progression. He's trying to get an Aghanim Scepter. That will certainly help out quite a bit, as that Song of the Siren has been kind of pesky for him, stopping the life drain. If he gets the Aghanim Scepter, he can just restart it up again after the song is finished. And Old Eleven still working towards that Blink Dagger. I just can't imagine he's going to get it before this... Uh, next potential game ending push but i really love what they're doing they're coming outside of the base they don't want to let eg be able to get to the base they want to fight outside of it here comes the ice blast coming in with the bkb timing it's gonna wear out they hit the ice blast but it's just not good enough song of siren will allow eg to be able to kind of reset this fight and samael just blows up the night stalker instantly ame in a questionable position not really sure where he can go he actually gets ensnared up by the naga siren it just kited around constantly samael comes in gives him a hit gg is going to be called by ltd they don't even wait for the end of it they see there's just no way for ame to be able to carry this oh, one God. out the the nail on the coffin there samael with the enchant totem crit right into the face of that anti-mage I just think that the way that EG draft right now, like their love for the Naga Siren, having the Nature's Prophet offlane, we spoke briefly about the, the minus armor strategy with a ranged physical damage dealer, having those treants as well pressuring so hard. LGD safe lane, like, it, when you have that kind of pressure and it's an anti-mage in the lane that you're really having to worry about, like, securing farm for, and all you have is an Ancient Apparition and a Night Stalker, it just feels impossible. Yeah. Like, how do you do enough in the laning phase to give Ame the game that he needs? And, I, you know, again, going into game number two, maybe you think about just banning one of those heroes. You know, maybe the Naga Siren, if you're going to be first picking Void, might be the better choice because then at least you can rely on Chronosphere a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But just always think about, we need ways of dealing with this early game aggressive push that EG are bringing. Yeah. If, if I'm LGD, it's either one or two ways. I'm either banning Naga if I want to take Void in the first one, too. Or uh, I'm taking away that visage. Like I, I personally feel like that the core visage just gave evil geniuses um, such a strong timing window because not only he was using the familiars to go and put pressure on mid and stuff, but also just being able to uh, to siege high ground so effectively with just the birds. But that's gonna be it for game number one. We'll be back after a short break with game number two of LGD versus Evil Geniuses.